Trump has picked people for all 15 cabinet level spots now. So as we had here now three weeks out, basically marking three weeks since the election tomorrow, he's moving faster than many other president elects. He's seizing a kind of focus and giving those people an earlier start for any prep they want to do. They now have all this time till January before they go to hearings and possible confirmation and into those jobs. This speed, though, has also meant that Trump is skipping the vetting and the FBI checks, which protect the government and its people. And that's why one of the top picks is already out. Trump ending last week with his first loss of the incoming administration, and it was a big one. Matt Gates, the firebrand that he picked for AG, that he sent down to the Senate along with his vice president-elect to meet with senators to make this pitch. That's how they started this whole thing. And it's a sign of how Donald Trump, while the winner of this election, is also a one-term sort of lame duck figure. We don't usually have presidents take a break and then go into a second term. And so the cabinet is where we're seeing the testing. And in some places where we're seeing Trump make some headway, putting in all these people and also getting early losses. As for the Project 2025 news, Trump has now chosen at least seven of its authors for various posts. Now, some of these are the kind of posts that fill out any large administration and may not be super important, or we can't say yet what type of larger impact those people will have. Others, including Deputy Chief of Staff Stephen Miller, are clearly in the driver's seat in the White House. Now, this makes some sense. Whatever your opinion or views of these people and what they said in Project 2025, which you're free to have, it makes some sense that Donald Trump is drawing on the aides and staffers and insiders that overlap with Project 2025. So it's not like, oh my God, can you believe Stephen Miller's back in the White House? He was in the White House the first time. We've interviewed him precisely because of his important role around Trump. So this isn't a five alarm fire that you cannot believe it's happening. It is, however, a contradiction of what Donald Trump ran on when the same issue of Project 2025 came up. Because he ran away from the ingredients of Project 2025, because he and his aides on the Trump campaign determined that it was not politically popular. For example, national abortion ban was basically in 25. Gutting the Department of Education, which for any of its criticisms is still a thing that is more popular with many teachers and parents than the idea of going back several decades and having no federal role in the department. Republicans basically saw that the perception of Project 2025 and the ingredients of Project 2025, including a national abortion ban, were dragging down their party. And that led to many MAGA leaders and Donald Trump trying to do something that maybe it worked or maybe it didn't matter because people were voting on other issues. But they then had to go out from Trump on down and try to de a MAGA plan that was originally touted as the MAGA plan for governing. I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. Project 2025 is not affiliated with the Trump campaign. I don't know what the hell it is. It's Project 25. He's involved in Project. And then they read some of the things, and they are extreme. I mean, they're seriously extreme. But I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know anything about it. It's extreme which you only know because you know something about it, but you know nothing about it, but you won't read it. It went on like this. That doesn't mean you can't get a clear view on things if you follow the facts, listen to different sources, and learn. Now, that would mean, of course, like I just showed you, listening to a debate that has both candidates or talking to people in both campaigns, as we have done throughout our reporting in this whole era. So we interviewed Trump aides during the campaign and asked about Project 2025. We used our platform, our journalistic power, if you want to call it that, to try to get answers, to try to have a back and forth and to learn. And we also saw, and we discussed it with these aides and in our fact checks in and around these interviews, that there was clearly a tension between what I just showed you, the overlap of Donald Trump's aides and advisors and veterans writing up 2025 and saying this was the MAGA plan, and then the political reality that it was a drag on Trump and other Republicans. So when I asked several different top Trump aides about it on this program, remember, they all denied the links. The Project 2025 has absolutely nothing to do with the past, present, or future President Trump. The president, his campaign have made it very clear that no one speaks for their policies except for him or their campaign. It's very simple. President Trump has said he has nothing to do with Project 2025. Pretty clear. That's more than one official. Some of them had past White House experience. Some of them had campaign experience. Miller, as mentioned, going back into the second term. And so what you get there is an important piece 
of evidence, what we call going on the record in the business. They said in public when they wanted your vote that this wasn't what they were about from Donald Trump on down. And now that they got your vote, they're going back into office to use your votes, the power they got from this election. And they're not just picking one or two, they're picking several prominent Project 2025 authors and contributors, including the co-author of the whole thing, Russell Vogt, who Trump is tapping to be a White House budget officer, which is an important thing in the federal government, right? The budget kind of intersects with just about everything. And he's a Trump loyalist. He has talked about trying to sort of kneecap or destroy various different federal agencies. And the Center for Climate Reporting did some undercover work, which is kind of a sting, so it isn't something that uh, certified, verified journalists do, where they kind of went undercover, but it does expose some of what vote says, and here it is. 80% of my time is working on the plans of what's necessary to, to take control of these bureaucracies, whether it's uh, destroying their agency's notion of independence. They're independent from the president. The whole notion of an independent agency should be thrown out, particularly with the Department of Justice. The president has, you know, the ability both along the border uh, and elsewhere to maintain law and order with the military. This is about power. You don't have to be an expert on all the different issues in independent regulatory agencies or what many Trump allies and other conservatives before Trump came to prominence talked about, which was once seen as a more radical agenda, that you would use government power to try to kneecap and take control of parts of the government which had been deemed more independent, that word again, because many people over the years thought it was better, this was kind of a nonpartisan consensus, to have parts of the government that aren't as partisan and under control of the back and forth of the elections. For example, what do you want the military to do? That's generally been less partisan, more independent. What do you want the medical rules to be at the FDA? Most folks thought they shouldn't zigzag every four or eight years based on party. And in the Supreme Court, there have been a long-term, multi-decade effort to take more control from these independent agencies, at least if Republicans are in charge. We can have a discussion on a separate day about how some of this fades when they don't think they can run the place. Now, the Trump campaign says that undercover video and that stuff has nothing to do with the campaign itself. But vote is going to have more power, the individual I'm showing you here. And some of that involves just big priorities about the budget. For example, food assistance for Americans or children who might be hungry, that could be cut. Project 2025 also calls for that. So you can see that some of the stuff that wasn't popular was written down in the book that they ran from, which now looks like it's going to get a second life in the second term. As for restructuring the DOJ, well, again, I just showed you they ended last week having to skip out on the nominee they originally wanted, but empowering the president to have more direct control over prosecution goes back to what has been a disfavored Nixon-era thing. And remember, I've told you this before, this isn't all just left, right, red, blue stuff. There's a heck of a lot of people, independents, traditional conservatives who don't think, after the lessons of Nixon, that the DOJ should have that kind of power. Here's Trump's new AG pick on the issue. The Department of Justice, the prosecutors will be prosecuted, the bad ones. The investigators will be investigated, because the deep state, last pre term for President Trump, they were hiding in the shadows. But now they have a spotlight on them, and they can all be investigated, and the House needs to be cleaned out. Now. I told you last week, Pam Bondi has a lot more work experience as an AG and working in state governments than, than Matt Gates did. So she comes into this much more in line with the type of experience that past presidents have sought. And if you're tracking these picks, that means that Trump started somewhere way, you see on the screen, way over here with Matt Gates and moved to Bondi, right? And she'll go through her confirmation process. But whether or not she has the experience, the Senate also has a big obligation to check whether she meant what she said in those statements and how they are going to try to ensure the independence and the rule of law in the United States, which is something that is supposed to matter regardless of who wins. Why does that relate to Project 2025? Well, think about it. Yes, there's a certain amount of political spin in all of this. But if these are people who will tell you one thing to get your vote, and say it out loud from the candidate on down, no, that's not our plan, and then turn around and not even wait weeks, I mean, two, three weeks in, stuff the operation with all the people they said they had nothing to do with. Then how does the government and these co-equal branches of government, the Congress, and the rest of us in society and the press, how do we take these claims and promises when they evaporate so quickly into thin air? That's not just politics as usual. 